Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, we are going to be doing my monthly eyeshadow palette rankings. So if you want to see what the worst was and what came out on top, then just keep watching. Hey guys, if you're new here, my name is Morgan. I am a product knowledge enthusiast. I just love knowing anything and everything about all the new makeup on the market and sharing my thoughts with you guys, particularly eyeshadows. I love me some eyeshadows. So, how many palettes did we try? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine palettes this month. And honestly, looking down at my table here, there's not a palette that I do not like. So even the worst palettes are actually really, really good. So this video is gonna be pretty positive. So we're gonna start off with number nine, my least favorite palette this month, which is still really pretty. That is the Odin's Eye Saga of Freya. Oh my gosh, you guys were coming down my throat because I was pronouncing it Freeha. I'm learning Spanish right now, okay? I was like pronouncing it in Spanish. Anyways, Saga of Freya, chapter one. Tears of Freya. So this is what it looks like. Odin's Eye came out with a Freya collection. So there are three palettes that you're going to see reoccurring in this video. But this is what the palette looks like. Quite honestly, it's ranking at number nine because it really just is not my favorite color story of everything. It's probably my least favorite. It's a little, a little too warm for me. And I did struggle with a couple of the colors kind of fading away. But again, you can get a gorgeous look with this palette. The quality is decent. The shimmers are what stand out in here. Really really incredible. Honestly, like, I recommend this palette. I think it's nice. It's the one that I recommend the least in this video, but I recommend it. I think it's really pretty. This whole collection in general, Odin's I did a fab job with, so number nine, I like it. Moving on to number eight, I have only used this palette once, I will be honest with you, and I'm very impressed by it. This is the Sephora Collection I Love Palette in the shade, I think it's Warm Cool. Because they have like warm medium, cool medium, light, dark, deep. So I chose the medium cool one. So I just did a video earlier this week testing a full face of Sephora collection. I have always been so curious about the product. So I thought why not make it a video? I got the products on a decent discount. And this was the palette that I chose. Honestly, I was doubtful at first. The packaging looked boring and the shadows looked a little bit cheap to me, you know, a little makeup revolution-y. And then I tried them and the quality here is beautiful. This is a great everyday palette for me. I love these tones. It's really in a portable compact. I think the reason that it's ranking at number eight, just looking down, is because it's kind of boring compared to everything else. But I like boring. The shadows really impress me. This is a great value. It's $14. This is a great little guy to travel with. It's not too expensive. So if it breaks or you lose it, it's not that big of a deal. But it contains literally every eyeshadow shade you could need for a vacation or just the everyday to grab for, throw in your purse. But yeah, I really like this. The mattes are blended really well. The shimmers were really gorgeous. It wasn't like a wham bam shimmer. You know, the shimmers aren't superb, but they work and the mattes blend really beautiful. I don't have anything bad to say. This is just where it fell. I actually am really into these palettes and I recommend them. They're really great for the price. Another $14 palette that is really fabulous that I got is the e.l.f. The New Classics. Now, e.l.f. eyeshadows can be a little bit hit or miss for me. Sometimes I feel like the quality is ugh, especially when they try to be a little bit too crazy with their colors. Sorry, the formulas just don't match up. But with a good neutral palette, they did a fabulous, fabulous job with this one. So this is another one. It has all the colors you could need. I compared it to my Scott Barnes palette. So if you want to see how that compares to Scott Barnes, then check out that video. So the shimmers in here, they're good. They're not the best. The mattes are what's amazing in here, which normally it's the other way around. I love the mattes in here. It's a really easy to read palette. It's very easy to create a look, follow along, not have to think about it. I actually, you know, I tried this only last week and I've used it three times. That's a lot. The lasting power on this isn't the best, but it's a really solid palette with great neutrals. Definitely worth $14. In comparison to the Sephora, the Sephora is actually better quality. I like the color story of this better because you have some fun pops in here. You have some warm tone neutrals, you have some cool tone neutrals, you have some grays and silvers in here. You have this fun green gold. The color story is a little bit better for me, so that's why I like it. Number six, we're back to Miss Freya over here from Odin's Eye. So this is the big guy from the Odin's Eye collection. This is the Freya Saga palette. 
get it out of its cover. A little bit clunky for me, but in this case, that's okay, just because of the style of the palette. It's supposed to be like a book. And so the first side, you open it, kind of like warm reddish kind of tones over here. I created a gorgeous look with this side of the palette. And then you flip it, and then you have some more greeny kind of neutral tones. This, you can actually get a really gorgeous neutral smoky eye. The shade all over the lid, I'm drooling just thinking about it. I haven't used every shade in here, but if you aren't familiar with Odin's Eye, they definitely have a really great formula for the price as well, and their shimmers are what puts them on top, but I don't love, love, love this color story. I think it's great. I think it's versatile, but it's not a palette that I look at and I feel immediately inspired by. Again, really, really pretty. I don't know. This is just where it fell. It's not my favorite color story in this video. Moving on to number five, I have not shut up about this palette recently. Wait till we get to the other ones because I've talked a lot about those as well, but this is the ColourPop and Malibu Barbie palette. I've talked about this in my top 10 recommendations for summer because it truly is just such a fun summer palette. You can also get neutral looks in here as well. You have the fun pops of blue, of pink, of yellow. You can get a warm look, you can get a neutral look, you can get a really hot fire pink look. Now it's not top notch quality like this shade right here in the middle. Maybe use a glitter glue or a wet brush. But you know what? It works. It's a great value. Actually, this is one of ColourPop's more expensive palettes, but ColourPop is having their 30% off sale. Maybe not at the point that this is uploaded, but hopefully you got it during the sale if you did want it. But seasonally, I'm into this. I think if it was winter right now, this would probably be number nine. I just wouldn't be feeling the color story. But because it is summer, I now have a full-time career in the beauty world. I'm all about the color, having fun. I'm in a great mood every day. I really like this one. This one has been fun for me. I've had a lot of had a lot of fun with it. This is my third video I'm filming today, by the way, so I I'm going loopy. <laughs> Moving on. Oh my god, I'm so thirsty. Moving on to palette number four. Last time I'm gonna talk about Odin's Eye. Sorry, their collections always have so many palettes. This is the Chapter 2 Cat with Golden Carriage. Okay, so if you're gonna get one palette from this collection, you need to get it solely because there's a cat on it. No, I'm just kidding. It actually is the best color story in my opinion as well. But as you can see, the artwork is absolutely stunning as Odin's eye palettes always, always are. But what a unique color story. If you're looking for a fun, unique color story for summer, if you really like blues, you are going to love this. The shade right here, bling. I just stuck my nail in there. One of the most insane shadows of all time. A beautiful blue. Again, I just think you would have so much fun with this palette. Be a little bit careful. It can get muddy if you don't use it the correct way, but this one is really fun, and I always love to point out unique palettes, and this one is unique. Number three. This one is not unique, and it was actually just featured in my, well, actually these last three were all in my June favorite, so this will be repetitive, but the Patrick Ta Major Dimension Shadow Palette. Honestly, it's boring, but I love boring. Uh, these are shadows that I've been reaching for kind of off camera. It's not an insanely unique palette. It's not fun. It's not the reasoning for every other palette that I've put here. It's just easy to grab for. So a downside of this, I feel like, is you really can't get a ton of different looks, but you know exactly what kind of look you're going to get. And the thing is, that look that I'm going to get with this palette is the look that I want to wear a lot. So I actually have been reaching for this a handful of times. I want to say like five or six times I've just reached for this to throw on a quick everyday eye look. You know, it's not a phenomenal palette, but it's just something that you end up using. Boring, but functional, and it works. The quality is great. The shadows blend. The shimmers are really pretty. I wish you would have put some different shimmers in here, though. There's something missing in here, I feel like, but oh my god, apparently not, because I keep grabbing for it, so I have to put it at number three. It's probably my most used palette this month. Moving on to number two. I'm counting these all as one palette because you guys know I feel like these should all be one palette, but these are the Sydney Grace and Temptalia collaboration. I am currently wearing Radiant Reflection. It's arguably the most colorful one, but I'm wearing the pinky side rose tones here so you can definitely get a wearable look with this palette even though it's the most colorful i could have even made it more wearable but i always like to go a little extra on camera anyways i mean just with sydney grace in general they have some of the best eyeshadow quality 
ever. If you like pigment, you're going to love these. If you like really rich mattes and rich shimmers, lots of pigment, lots of coverage, lots of reflex, you will love the Sydney Grace formula. I must admit, while I did give a little bit of shade to the way that she organized the palettes, Temptalia chose some of the most beautiful colors I've ever seen. I mean, the looks that you can get with these. Honestly, literally, this, these palettes contain some of the most beautiful shades. Definitely watch my swatch and sip where I covered these palettes if you want my full review, my full kind of thoughts and recommendations. But I will say if you aren't sure which one to get, Quintessence, this one right here is my favorite. But I love purple tones and cool tones and all of that and this contains those. So this one is my favorite, but they all are phenomenal. All right, it is time to move on to our last and final palette for today's video. You know what it is, don't you? If you've been watching my videos, you know what it is. This is the ABH Norvina Volume 5. I think I featured this in 10 videos this month because I just love it so much. Uh, so it's a giant palette. If you don't like giant palettes, this one's not for you. But I also really love how functional the packaging is. This mirror is fantastic. I've just been putting it out on my desk and I can do like a full face of makeup without having to like scrunch in a tiny little mirror. But that aside, I mean, if you like purples, this is it for you. I feel like the color story in here is one of my favorite color stories for purples. I love the neutral row that you have here. I just feel like the color placement, everything was really well thought out. I think that these Norvina palettes seem to have some of the best quality as well. I feel like ABH really revived themselves with this launch because everything has been kind of yawn prior to this and that Norvina palette like got me pumped again to see what they can come out with. I was ready for it. I was excited for it. I really love it. I don't think you'll regret it if you get your hands on it as long as it's a color story that you're interested in but also I just love the color story. It's purple so it was gonna be somewhere near the top as long as the quality worked. All right, you guys, there we have it. Those were all of my rankings for this month's eyeshadow palettes. Yeah. I already have on my list for July palettes that I've tried two palettes. So it's July 4th. No, it's July 5th. And I don't think it would grow too much since I'm going to be out of town, but we will see how long next month's list is. But this isn't the longest list that we've had. So <laughs> anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you've tried any of these palettes out, let me know what you think. Or you can rank your own palettes. I'd love to hear it. I love reading your guys' comments when you participate. So <laughs> if you aren't subscribed to my channel already, I would love it if you would consider taking the time to do so. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.